Hey everybody, happy Friday. It is uh, great to see so many people whose names I recognize. Uh, Romulo, uh, it's great to see you. Sturm B, uh, uh, Artur, I'm so glad you're here, man. That's awesome. Um, thanks everybody, Snoops, uh, for joining me for part two of my first ever playthrough of Phantasmagoria 2. Um, and I'm super excited to, to get into this again today. It was really fun last time. I'm going to go over a few announcements just so I have everything in place before we get started. First and foremost, uh, I think we figured out the sound issue. Uh, thanks to, uh, at least on Twitch here, Sturm B, who spent some quality time with me over Discord. Uh, Sturm is uh, one of my Patreon members, and he spent uh, some time helping me figure out these sound issues, and together we we went through a bunch of different things, and I think we figured it out. Of course, it was a simpler fix than we thought, but I think we're in good shape. Uh, so let's hope that that's the case. Um, that's the first thing. Second thing, yes, I am wearing new glasses. A lot of people commented that I have new glasses. They're not... I didn't replace my old glasses, but they are computer glasses. I didn't know that they made computer glasses, but because I have a, a prescription that's progressive, I have to read, and then I have to look far away, this uh, this allows me to look straight on. I'm not constantly doing that. Man, I had perfect eyesight until I was like 44, and then it just went downhill. Uh, getting old is not for the weak. It's good to see you, Derek. Good to see you guys. Oh, and, and um, I'm seeing on the chat here, let's talk a little bit about the chat. Last week, the chat was flying by and I just did not know how to uh, interact. I'm kind of new at this anyways. I was told, thank you, for to put it on slow mode. And so I think it's, uh, I did that and I hope that's going to help. I did, uh, you can see that these stream elements, bots, uh, I hope every five or 10 minutes you're going to get a flurry of all of our social media and things like that. So I hope that's okay. And uh, let's see what else. Oh, um, during this live stream and from now on, what I want to do is engage as much as I can. I'll get involved in the game and I just want to also go with the flow. But if you have a question for me, maybe just preface it with like, hey, Paul, and that way, it'll be easier for me to delineate between you guys just having fun talking to each other and any questions you might have for me. And then a couple times during the stream, I'll stop playing and I'll just go straight to answering some questions and see how that goes. All right, what else? Um, oh, okay. Well, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I can't, I can't, I didn't do this last time and I don't want to forget this time. I cannot be doing this. I wouldn't be able to be doing this if it wasn't for my Patreon members for helping me out. Uh, this is a list of all of my $10 and above members. And if it wasn't for you guys, I simply could not uh, make the time to do this. So thank you so very much. It means a lot that you're all uh, invested in this uh, financially uh, so that I can invest my time into this. And um, for those of you who are not Patreon members, uh, this is my little commercial. Uh, we are hoping to get to $2,500 a month by the end of this year so we can go into next year and start to explore different games from that era and uh, do some deep dives into those games as well. So starting at $2,500 into next year is going to be uh, vital for us to get there. We're almost at $2,000. We're just a little under we're about $250, $260 shy of $2,000. I'm really hoping we can get to $2,000 before the end of this month, which is like two or three more days. So if there's anybody out there who are enjoying this and you have some expendable income and an extra $10 or $20 a month for a little while would not in any way impede or hurt you, I can't tell you how much it would help me and help my little team at Conversations with Curtis. So please consider joining. There will be some... You'll see the the, the link uh, coming up. If um, Patreon isn't your thing and you want to just give a donation, you can do that through Venmo, Venmo or PayPal or Zelle. Uh, it would mean a lot. I really appreciate that. Oh, and just before I forget, 
a little incentive, we got some stickers. That's right, we got some stickers. So anybody who joins Patreon at the $3 or above level, I'll send you a couple stickers for as a token of my appreciation. So, uh, uh, and anybody who's already on Patreon who would like a sticker, please send me your email address uh, via email and, uh, and I'll send that out to you. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Put that right there. Oh, by the way, lapel pins are on their way and that'll go for $10 and above members. And then we're thinking about t-shirts. I've got some really cool ideas for, you know, we got to get a gray pocketed t-shirt that's already sewed up to the top here, right? And then we, yeah, we got all sorts of kind of, kind of ideas that we'll do in the future. All right, let's see, a couple other things. Oh, I, I don't know what I was thinking, but I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I scheduled two streams within 24 hours. I, I've never streamed before in my life six months ago, and now I'm doing two in less than a day. But I really, really am excited about tomorrow. Andy Hoyos, the director of Phantasmagoria 2, is going to join me tomorrow. It's going to be, he's my seventh guest. We've done six streams so far. He is the seventh. He um, was responsible for everything. He was a huge member of Sierra Online in its heyday as an art director. He was involved in some of their best, most well-known projects. Super cool guy. Uh, we haven't talked to each other in a long, long time. So I can't wait to talk to him. He actually sent me 24 or 25 backstage photos that I had never seen before. So we'll be going over those during the game uh, and sharing those. Uh, and in a little bit, I'm going to show you a teaser that the genius that is Daniel Albu put together uh, for that uh, stream tomorrow. And we're going to, you'll be the first to see it. Also, there's some updates on the script. And so I won't talk about that now. I want you to join me tomorrow. Uh, I'd love to have him join because he's kind of unaware of how much Fantas has been, uh, how much it's affected people like you who, who enjoy it. And I think he's a little suspect i guess uh that this is really happening and uh to have a lot of people join us live would be would be really cool let's see what else and i'm gonna start this game i promise uh andy script the teaser will show in a second i think i did everything okay uh let's talk about this game so here's what i want to do I noticed after comments last week that people really want me to experience everything and I really want to experience everything. And they want me to do, uh, you know, all the Easter eggs and, and all that. So rather than feeling like you need to guide me because I'm clearly going to make a mistake and not, and not get to a thing or go past something before I can go back, I have uh, asked um, my my genius friend, Daniel Albu, to act as my Phantasmagoria, you know, Sherpa. <laughs> he knows the game backwards and forwards, and he's going to join me. I'll bring him out in just a minute. Oh, my goodness, I forgot to have him join me on Skype. He's probably wondering what the heck is going on here. I knew I forgot something. He'll be here in just a second. Oh, my gosh. Live. Live. Uh... So, Daniel, I'm on there now. <laughs> if you... I'll wait to see you. Uh, yeah, that's what you get with a live program, right? There he is. Okay, I'll bring him on. This is the perfect time to bring him in. So let's do that. Uh, I need to add him to make sure I got everything. Everybody just talk amongst yourselves for a second, and then I'll, I'll make sure we have everything in place. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, so there's that. Sorry about that, Daniel. Um, no problem. Okay. Uh, and then making sure you're coming through the video correctly or the audio correctly. I've learned so much about audio in the last week, I can't even tell you. I still don't think I know anything about audio, but I've learned a few things. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Daniel's going to be guiding me and just keeping me from making any kind of uh, uh, 
not turn back mistakes. But in the meantime, since Daniel's here, he helped, or he, he masterminded our teaser for tomorrow's uh, uh, Chapter 7 uh, broadcast. And I'd like to share that with you right now. Uh, Daniel, is there anything that you want to let people know before we, uh, we, we show it? No. Just watch it and enjoy. I think you will. All right, here we go. Here's our, our teaser for tomorrow's show. Yeah, so there you go. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Seventh Guest was the first ever FMV game, 1993 or so. Yep, first <laughs> horror FMV. Game. First horror FMV game. So there we go. We have Andy as our seventh guest. That was the first horror FMV game. It's all kismet. And next month, if I haven't said this already. Laura Lai Shannon is going to be my guest, and we're going to broadcast on November 26th, which is the actual 25th anniversary of the release of Phantasmagoria 2. So please do not miss that one. That's super exciting to talk about. All right, I think it's time to start. So I'm just going to dive in from where we were last time. I'm going to backtrack a little bit and see some things that, that I missed, <laughs> thanks to Daniel's uh, tips, and we'll just keep moving forward. Uh, yeah, I think I got everything, so let's do it. I'm going to move on to the game. There it is. Let's go. And let's keep our fingers crossed that sound. Oh, you know what? I need to make sure we get the music back up. I had to turn it off. Let me do that really quick. I'm going to keep the music at a somewhat smaller volume. But everything else should be nice and and loud and crackly. Okay, here we go. So when last we were with Curtis, we were hanging out in his office and checking out emails and visiting people. I think I'm just going to stay in my cubicle for a bit and see what there is to see. As I'm looking at this right now, I always wondered about that photo right there. I wonder who, I imagine that must be somebody from, yeah, you know, somebody that worked at Sierra. I don't know who that was. I can't read any of those sticky notes, but, uh, and then there was that little frog. Pretty cool set direction that they created. All right, let's start with some phone calls. I don't want to get to work yet. I'm going to call, I'm going to call Trevor. Oh, you know what? I don't need to do that because guess what? <laughs> I made my own. It almost looks exactly the same, doesn't it? Oh, I do want to show you something. I mentioned this in, a, in an earlier stream on Conversation with Curtis. It, it's hilarious. He says, Trevor Barnes. Then he basically just says, oh, enough with the last names. Me. He spells Jocelyn's name wrong. His girlfriend. He spells it wrong. It's with an I. J-O-C-I-L-Y-N. That is a sign that this is not a relationship that is working. And there's Tom, Trace, Bob, and P A W Pa. All right, let's make some phone calls. I'm gonna call Trevor. Let's see how Trevor's doing. Oh, okay. I'm, I guess I'll do it. Uh, I shouldn't bug him. No, that's not how Curtis would talk. I shouldn't bug him. Yeah, I'm going to do all these voiceovers since it's not doing it here. So luckily, uh, I sound like the actor who played him. All right, let's try someone else. See how Jocelyn's doing. Maybe I should apologize for not spelling her name right. Maybe I should just check in. How do you spell your name again? Oh, man, I'm not going to. No one's going to answer. 
everybody working or something? I better let her work. All right. Let's see if Tom wants to talk. Somebody better want to talk to me. Haha. -ha. This is Tom Ravel. I'm not at my desk right now, so please leave a message. Hi, Tom. This is uh, Curtis. I'm just calling to let you know that the uh, Veneman document uh, will be finished on time, and I'll just go ahead and post it. All right. Thanks. Now, no one's saying anything about sound, so I'm assuming we're good. So I'll get a little thumbs up from somebody, but I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, I will say that those glasses I wore, those were not real glasses. Those were just props. I didn't wear glasses back then. Back then, I actually had to pretend to wear glasses because my sight was great. Now I couldn't do that. I couldn't go the opposite way. So there we go. My prop glasses. Uh, I'm not done calling people. So I have a venom and document that I'm going to give to Tom. That seems like a very important thing. Venomin. It's a great name, isn't it? It's like venom. It's cool. All right. Who else am I going to call? Let's see if Therese. I didn't have a very good conversation with her last time. I was very flummoxed. Oh, there she's not going to answer. Here, I'll be Curtis. What are you doing, Curtis? Stop bothering the nice young lady. See if we can compare that to the actual one. That would be great. Does he ever call Bob? I can't imagine he ever calls Bob. I don't remember ever talking to Bob on the phone. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Like I want to talk to the king of assholes. There you go. I'm just, I'm wondering who's meaner to who. It seems like Curtis is just as mean to Bob as Bob is to Curtis. Who do I dare call? Pa? You know, he kind of is Curtis's surrogate Pa, isn't he? Oh, okay. He's not even, he's on the phone. Remember when we had, uh, remember fizzy signals? Man. All right. So clearly they don't want me to talk on the phone. They want me to get to work. So let's get to work. Okay, I'm back at work. So I have to do a password. Do I have to do a password? Yeah. So what do I do? Oh boy, I'm going to get in trouble already. Oh. Let's log in. Oh, okay, I'm going to. Was my it was blob, right? Oh no, wrong one. I think it's. No, you chose Bob's user instead of Curtis's. So I used... Oh, okay, I gotta be... Aha, uh, ha, ha, there we go. It's conversations with Curtis, not conversations with Bob. You're right. But why... That's an interesting time that people could just go on there and see other... And if our passwords are so easily... I could have gone in and... We could have, I could have been a really good hacker back in the 90s if I had only known how easy it would have been. Why is the chat slowed down? Uh, Alma, that is my bad. I was kind of panicked about not being able to read people's chats uh, fast. And of course, I'm not reading them at all now. I can, uh, next week, I'll just let it go normal again. And then I'll just scroll back as we go. But uh, am I missing anything? All right, going to keep moving. So I'm in. I'm in. All right, so employees. See what's going on. Okay, so these are just the folks. This is everybody. Ooh, their birth dates. I was born in '69. Sweet. I'm younger than I thought. Tom, uh, 58. Okay. Jocelyn, 71. Very good year. And we're not going to get Warner's birth date. And uh, what about Trevor? Is he older than me? 69. Wait a minute. He's 69, 214. Oh, he was born on he was born on February 14th. Aw. What a and I was born on April 7th. My daughter was born on May 7th. Okay, so he's just a couple um he's a couple months older than I am. Alright, so we did the employees. This is Venom and document. Let's check this thing out. Oh, okay. Oh, do I get hit again? What happens? Oh, interesting. Okay. That's cool. They showed me 
working hard. I, I am working hard, or at least I look like I'm working hard. I'm going to kind of read this because I think this is probably really important for this game. Uh, documentation for product Venomin, yet unnamed. Definition, the chemical compound known as Venomin's tincture, as yet unnamed for public consumption, is currently under review for appraisal by the FDA. Maybe that's what they're using for our for our vaccines now. Used for years in Mexico and Canada, Venomin's tincture will be marketed by Sagawa Inc. in partnership with Wintech Industries for the coming cold and flu season. And it should be approved in a timely fashion. This all sounds really good on the up and up. They're doing good work. The properties of Venomin's tincture are as follows. Anti-inflammatory. In tests conducted on a volunteer arthritis patients, VT caused a marked decrease in swelling and pain. See, this is good. It was also suspected to cause heart palpitations in three out of four test subjects. That's not good. It is believed that this side effect will allow the product to be marketed as a non-drowsy formula. They don't seem to be addressing the three out of four heart palpitations. They just seem to be going into non-drowsy territory. All right. Um, This working environment really feels like it was ahead of its time. I think, yeah, I don't know, or very behind its time. Antihistamine. Test markets reported a complete lack of nasal blockage following ingestion of VT. That sounds fantastic. Oh, however, there were an alarming number of nosebleeds also reported. R&D recommends that a coagulant be added to the VT formula. Again, they don't seem too concerned. They just want to add more stuff to it. Pain reliever. The test group for this aspect of the drug consisting of ex-college football players with serious knee injuries, which I'm one, by the way, all reported substantial relief from their chronic pain. So, I mean, I wish I had this drug back in the day. One eighth of all the test subjects also reported a metallic taste in the mouth and a buzzing in the ears. One tenth reported mild hallucinations involving insects. These symptoms are considered negligible. This is like those commercials now where it's like, improve your sex life. And then there's like, you know, a minute of, you know, really fast talking, saying all the things. You might get heart disease. You might die. You might da-da-da-da-da. That's what this should be. I'll read the next one fast when it gets bad. Cough suppressant. Tuberculosis patients at the Douglas Clark Sanitarium reported long periods of relief from coughing after take, taking large doses of VT. A small percentage of the patients also reported nickel-sized purple lesions with appeared, which appeared on their midsections and lower backs, but these lesions are thought to be unrelated to VT. According to Wintech's research department, they were most likely caused by the sanitarium's decision to change laundry detergents. The lesions have since healed in all but three cases. See? It's kind of like today, right? Maybe it is ahead of its time. So that's the Veneman doc document. I guess my question is, is what do I have to do with the Veneman document? I don't even know what I do. What do I do? I click on the screen. Click on the screen? This screen? Yeah, on the document, yeah. I'm going to type again. Do it again. Ooh. You notice I was got that pencil in my mouth? I was working hard. I've used this scene. Oh, this is... It's for him. Good I don't think he's going to get no, punched he's... again. Oh. I think it's only one punch per computer. Good boy. <laughs> yeah, so this is his mom. No. Oh, no. His... No. Flashback on the oh. computer. Yeah, I remember filming these scenes. They were they were not always easy. They were everything was done, you know, out of context, and uh, a lot of times I was, you know, I just had to film all the phone calls or 
anytime I was working on the computer and then, then something like this would come up and, you know, in, on film sets, everybody's so busy working that the environment doesn't allow for getting into an uh, emotional state. And, and that took me up. I mean, this was really my first time ever working on camera. So I was unaccustomed to sort of having to, to get there so quick. I remember those weren't always easy scenes. Um, so he's watching his mom get taken away. He's been in an asylum for a year or a year ago. His mom just got taken away by what looked like mental asylum people. Did she leave her son at home? And why is she wearing that awful wig? I mean, that is really just one of the worst wigs ever. Did they not know? They had to know. Was it on purpose? We're going to have to ask Andy these questions. All right, I have a question. Snoops. Hey, Paul, the scenes were filmed out of context, but were some sometimes filmed in chronological order, be it for just a dozen of scenes in a row? Uh, you know, I think if we were in the, you know, Wintech, uh, we would, I don't remember. You know, I, I think that, like I would do all my scenes in a row with, Trevor and his cubicle. And I think we would film those in somewhat chronological order, although, uh, you know, it's it's pretty dubious. Oh, by the way, last week I was really concerned about like the, uh, the linear nature of things. And then I had an idea. Curtis is bipolar. He's also, we don't know this yet, but he's an alien. He has no concept of time. So of course, I think I'm going to not worry about what time of day it is because Curtis has no idea. He's just floating through his day. That's my new idea. Um, all right. Let's see. Where am I? I watched that. I just noticed that my I remembered that my mom was taken away. I don't know why yet, though. We find out later, I imagine. All right. There's more stuff to see. That I can't do. Oh, it starts to go dark when I can't use stuff anymore. Okay, so I could still work in here. Ooh. That's a cool shot. Ooh. <laughs> I forgot about that. I didn't forget, but I didn't know it was going to happen right now. That was a real straitjacket. That was good. That's great. That is a great. That's a great scene. That's good. Uh, way to go, Don Berg. That was awesome. Good, uh, perfect movement with the camera. And again, the camera's now behind, like right over, right over here. So anytime you see me from that perspective, just know that they pulled that whole wall out. And I remember they hauled it out, or they brought in a prop. So they took everything out here, and then they had a prop, and someone was behind that, that uh, monitor and put their hand up. That was pretty fun. There's that scene when he's screaming something along the lines of, you know, I, I know who I am. That really reminds me of, I talked about this before, but the, the movie Angel Heart, which is a great movie from the 80s, Mickey Rourke and Robert De Niro. And at the very end, Mickey Rourke has this discovery that he is not who he thinks he is. And he's screaming, I know who I am. And it's a really amazing moment. And I always thought that this was kind of, I was doing my... A little bit of my Mickey Rourke in that in that moment. Okay, so I'm done. I gotta get get out of here. I guess I'm gonna go visit some people. I don't know, uh, Daniel. Maybe it's time to take lunch. Should I just go home and check out some stuff that I missed? Is this a good time to do that? No, you should stand beside the water cooler. Okay, I'm thirsty. I'm gonna go stand by the side of the water cooler. That sounds good. Uh, all right, I can't go back into water. The other side. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. How do I do it all? You guys must have been frustrated too to get. So how do I get? No, don't tell me. I'm going to figure this out. There. No. There. Oh my god. 
this must this is infuriating to me all right how do i get to the other side that's gonna take me i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna go there and now i'm gonna come back there we go that has to be a there has to be a better way to do that but don't tell me i'll figure there it. isn't <laughs> there isn't oh no <laughs> okay now you should uh, hold the alt button okay on your keyboard and click your belly button oh really there it's probably in that area right my alt button okay here we go uh, my alt. oh do i get do i get like a oh i'm doing the i'm doing the obs okay here we go This will be my illustrious guest tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Andy Hoyos, the director of Phantasmagoria 2. You can tell he is a very, very serious person. He was not fun at all. <laughs> Does that just go until I, I click again? That's amazing. Oh, look at that. I love the... He did the double take. He did like a triple double take. That must have been so much fun for those guys. They didn't tell us any of this stuff. We had no clue this was going to, all these things were going to be in there. Can I get it some? looks like they had a lot of time on their hands. I think they must have. Although I don't know if that's true, though. I think they were really, uh, I think that they were really trying to get this thing out. I mean, it was, it was all happening pretty quick. So uh, I don't think they were just goofing around. Um, I love, yeah, that's super cool. I'm going to get a drink of water while I'm here. Oh. Clicked on something stupid on my. Hey, I guess I'm gonna subscribe. <laughs> I accidentally am subscribing to my own my own thing here. Um, hold on. Okay, I'm thirsty. Let's get some water. That's it? It seems like it's really behind. Uh, I hope it's not. It seems like it's lagging a little bit. If it's lagging too much, then let me know and we'll turn it off. I, I should save, right? I should save. I haven't saved yet. How do I do that? This is, I'm saving my game. And then I call it something else, right? Oh, is that right, Daniel? Did I do that right? Nope. Try nope. Again, you should get the scum VM screen. Oh, you know what? I think I accidentally did something that didn't let me do that. I can't remember what it was. Maybe we should try a different name for the file name. Okay. Let's and we'll see that. if that works. Yeah. Um, is it going to just go away? How about um, end of work day, which may not be the case, but that's what I'll remember it as. Okay, so there's got to be some people. Oh, I lost. Just check it out uh, in the control panel to see if it actually saved it. Okay. And the control panel is there. Okay, there you go. Okay. So you can click continue and. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go, go on about your hard work day. Yeah, well, I want to check in on some people. Now he's busy. He's very busy doing his fidgeters. So I am going to check on. I wonder if Jocelyn and I probably need to get some things straight, but we're not going to do that quite yet. Oh. Oh, you know what? I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to do stuff. I'm so. I know what I'm supposed. To. People say try everything on everybody. All right, I'm going to go back to Tom. Now, I'll go out there in a minute. Go back to Tom. Here we go. Hey, Tom, what are you going to do with that? Nothing. Oh, I lost some sound. Did you hear the sound go away? Yeah, <laughs> nothing. Oh, there it's back. He doesn't want any of this stuff. All right. Am I doing the right thing? If this is, if, if he was going to, Act, if this was going to activate, am I doing it the right way? 
Yeah. Okay. But you're not supposed to do that. Well, I'm going to make sure I don't mess anything up here. Don't I do that? But that's what's happening. So I guess this is later, right? Ah, hey, a scene. Hey, Jess, look at this. It's a picture of my folks. Well, let me see. <gasps> Your father is pretty sexy. <laughs> You know, you you look a lot like your mother. Yeah. Talk to her, Curtis. Tell her what's bothering you. Don't just walk away. I mean, communication is the key to relationships. Uh, okay. You know what I'm seeing is I'm pretty sure we're lagging. So I'm going to take a quick little break. I'm going to save the game. And then I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on. And then in the meantime, I'll answer some questions. Uh, so let's do that. Because I'm seeing it in the game I'm playing. And then when I see it on OBS, it's like three seconds later. And that might be what's recording. Uh, so I'm going to save that. I'm just going to stay end of workday. Can I just save? Can I just save it? I think I could just do that. I don't need to change the scene. OK, so let's go here. And I'm going to turn this off for just a second. And I'll turn it back on. All right, let me just check some. If you guys have questions, this is a good time. Uh, Gabriel Knight 1 is basically Angel Heart. People have said that. Uh, so I think Gabriel Knight is something I should, I should look into at some point. I should play it. I've never played any of these games. Jane took a lot of inspiration from that film. Uh... A lot of puzzles rely on you doing random things to have the game progress, so do everything you can in one area. See? Even though it may not work with Tom, it worked with Jocelyn. What do you think, uh, Daniel? What am I... How, how am I doing? You're doing great. <laughs> You're doing better than we did in the 90s. <laughs> well, I have, I have thousands of people that have helped me over the last 25 years, especially the last nine months. Uh, I have seen so many scenes from this game i've edited so many scenes into the conversations with curtis stuff that it's uh that's a, i've got a little bit of a all right i'm gonna just start new game oh i didn't st i started a new game that's not a good idea i want to let me do this one more time and i'll get the game going again to load hey end of work day there we go Okay, so I'm back. Uh, was there something else I wanted to show you? Oh, you know, I don't know how many people will be watching this that don't watch Conversations with Curtis, the, the oral history project, but I thought there might be a number. So this might be a good time. I'm gonna turn the music down to show you a couple of uh, backstage photos that I owned they are, a lot of these are currently on Phantasmagoria 2.1, Daniel's mini game, which is our website. If you just go to conversationswithcurtis.com, you get to play his really fun game that is an amalgam of Phantasm 2 and our, our series. But I thought it might just be kind of fun to show you a few photos from backstage. So let me see if I can, there we go. See, isn't that a, those beautiful stickers? So this one was, this was just a shot someone took. I thought it was kind of cool from in the, in the apartment in the mirror. That is myself and Monique backstage in the green room. Uh, just a, there was just this big kind of common area right next to the studio and once you walked into this not the studio but the it was just this huge room where the sets were and uh so this was our place to hang out that's the seattle times i think we're just chilling until they call us to come in and that's monique getting made up for the day uh that woman was gosh i can't remember her name she was just an amazingly kind and wonderfully positive person she was the wife of Robert Stanley, who uh, who was the makeup designer and created all the the creatures and uh, 
as special effects and stuff. So she was great. In fact, their son, I didn't realize this until someone mentioned it, played young Curtis. So he's got to be 30 something right now. So I think we need to reach out to him at some point, find out what it was like to get slimed with all the goo. He should be a Patreon member. He should, for goodness sakes. Yeah, let's get him, let's get his, let's get him on top of things here. Uh, and that's Regina King. I think her last name was King. And uh, her and I hanging out. Same, that's the same room. That's just the other, there was a table. So Monique and I were sitting at a table over there. There's like two tables and this is the other side of the room. And that's the infamous Adams Family pinball machine that we all dropped buckets and buckets of quarters into. I have to ask Andy if he, I, I think he played too. I think he was, he was into it. Uh, and then that's Todd and I. Todd played my dad uh, in the flashbacks. And Todd and I talked in episode one of Conversations with Curtis. So it was great catching up with him. And that's Rockna. That's one of the Polaroids that they took for continuity. They would take Polaroids every day you were on the set just to make sure that when you come back, if you're gone for a week or so, that you look exactly the same. It is very similar in style to the Polaroid that you have in your cubicle that you wondered about earlier. Exactly. Yeah, it's the same kind, but it was someone else. And I, maybe I wonder if anybody figured out who that was. Yeah, these are kind of blurry. They're not blurry from my end. But anyways, that's backstage. So you can see this uh, right here. That's one of the sets. So on the other side of that is either WinTech or my apartment or Dr. Harburg's office. And I think that was the door right there that led into the green room. So that's over here. You know, on the other side of this door was the ping pong table and then the the sitting room. And then in the back back was, was the dressing room. And makeup room and stuff like that so there you go thought you guys would get a kick out of that oh here's a here's a shot of me with my white contact lenses and then a shot of me with my red contact lenses look at that young dude all right enough of that let's get back to the game all right it is this is going a little smoother than last time i think sound is better uh i <laughs> I don't, don't forget to share the screen with me as well. Oh, I, I, did I stop sharing with you? How did that happen? Oh, because I, the game. because I closed the game. Yeah. I want you to just guess where I'm at. All right, I'll let you. Can you? Is that good? You able to see? Okay, let's get back to the game. Okay. Um, imagine there's anything else to show her I don't think giving her a screwdriver is gonna hey hey Therese can you fix my my, my chair all right all right Therese, or not Therese if I called her Therese I'd have gotten into so much trouble uh, okay uh, maybe I'll go see Trevor yes there he is I can talk to my buddy Trevor what's up Uh-oh. I know what's going on. I'll fix it. Oh, no. Okay. Sound went wonky, didn't it? Let me see if I can fix it. Oh, no. The thing that I do to fix it is not. Oh, wait a minute. OBS audio. Everything is in place the way it should be, and yet the sound went bad. I don't know what to do. Uh, is the music volume uh, OK? The oh, you know what? I'll tell you exactly what I did. I know what I did. I'm going to have to get out of this again. Um, let me let me save and come back. I'm going to save the game. Dreaming tree. Oh, I, want, I wouldn't mind hearing that scene again, but I uh, it's all right. Let's just do that. 
And now I want out. I know what I did. Like I'm pretty sure I know what I did. So hang tight, everyone. Turn that off. I'm going to bring it back. It should come back pretty quickly. Okay. And then this is what happened last time. Yeah, there we go. See, I'm becoming a sound guru. Load dreaming tree. There we go. This should be better. Don't forget to share the game with me. I won't. I'm trying to get to it. All right. Yeah, way better sound. See, I did it. I'm a genius. I'm not the only genius, Daniel. All right, there we go. Okay. All right, let's hang out. So, Dreaming Tree. Here's what I remember about the Dreaming Tree. Um, it was a closed down Mexican restaurant that had gone out of business. We were able to rent it for the shoot. We did all of our on-location stuff near the end of the shoot, about almost six months into filming. So talk about out of continuity. Um, and this guy, I don't, I never met him. He was a really nice guy. I know he's a, I remember Spoonie, I saw one clip where Spoonie did a interior monologue of him uh, counting receipts, which is, was just brilliant and hilarious, uh, as I imagine all of his playthrough was. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of all I remember at this point. It was in some small, it was in some suburb of, of Seattle. And let's see what's going on. I'll check out our, our waiter here. Well, well, well. The boys are playing hooky. Shame on you. Shame isn't part of my vocabulary. Well, it must be. Just say it. See what happens when you waste a good line on a street. That's a good line. Shame is not a part of my vocabulary. See what happens when you waste a good line on a straight boy. Um, hey, Daniel, if you have a second, would you find out the... I, I forgot his name. I used to know his name. When you get a second, just to maybe figure out who he I'll was. I'll check it out. Yeah. All right, let's talk to... Uh, let's talk to Trev. One receipt, my friend. All right, bud. I've got you trapped. Talk to me. What happened today? I saw something, that's all. Something I don't think was really there. Jason Bortz, thank you, Contra. So, continuity issue. Uh, where's his, where he got punched in the face by a computer fist and he had like a, you know, a bloody lip. He's got nothing. They should have, they should have known. Curtis, for God's sake, I'm your best friend. You know you can talk to me, don't you? I know. I... You remember how I told you about my mother going crazy and leaving my father and I alone? Yeah. It's not true. I mean, I thought it was, but until a few days ago, I remembered that she hung herself from, from her ceiling fan. Jesus, man, it's harsh. No wonder you're so flipped out. It's funny. Uh, um, first of all, this sound feels like a real, a real restaurant. It's a very busy restaurant. A lot of people talking. I think maybe I need to. Yeah, the music's up. There we go. I'm going to just quiet my patrons down a little bit. Uh, I don't remember, you know, this is one of those scenes that I haven't seen in a long time. So it's kind of fresh to me and it's interesting to see it uh, without judging it and trying to experience this game the way it's meant to be experienced. And, you know, I remember we sat there and we just did all these scenes and you're just trying to 
do your best to be as honest as you can and, and you know, just talk and listen to your, your scene partner and, uh, but you're also in your head and all that. But just watching that right now, I thought that uh, that's a touching moment that someone someone went through something really horrific. And but now let's let's put it all together. His mom did not leave him, but she hung herself. So why did she hang herself? Uh, Paul, have you played the first Phantasmagoria before? So much different from this one. I have not. I have never played. I've played two games in my entire life, not counting Wii games. So I'm, I am a, a newborn babe in this world. Curtis, don't take this personally, okay? But have you thought about talking to someone? I mean, all that stuff about your mother, that's an awful lot for you to deal with alone. Yeah, I've thought about it, Trev, but look, I'd rather be dead. I'd rather be dead than have to go back there. Hey, nobody's talking about sending you back. I'm just talking about counseling, okay? Yeah, okay, I'll think about it. Look, you're the only one I've told about this so far. You're not gonna tell anyone, right? Of course not, fool. <laughs> Are you kidding? My, my own therapist has made me so close to perfect, I, I never tell secrets. I never tell lies. Hell, I don't even crap anymore. I just excrete rose petals from my belly button. Uh, like I gotta ton of stuff I gotta do at work. I have enough energy, I'm gonna go slog through it right now. Yeah, well, me too, come to think about it. So, what do you think? Let's get the hell out of Dodge. Let's go, Miss Kitty. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't order anything. I guess they must be regulars, and he didn't seem to mind that they didn't order anything. Um, it was funny, at one point, I, I hadn't seen Paul do that in a little while, and Paul is such a good actor and was a good, such a good scene partner that I just reacted to what Paul said about the rose petals, and then I looked up, talk about a meta moment, and I watched me 25 years ago reacting to Paul exactly the same time I did, <laughs> almost in the exact same way. So I'm not sure if I recommend this experience to anybody or if I recommend it to everybody, but this is very, what is it, is it Groundhog Day? What is, I don't know, it's something, it's something. There could be a movie about this. You should uh, go to the storage room. I'm gonna go in the storage room. I was just thinking about that. Just came in back from lunch. I want to see if I can maybe. He didn't close the door. I'll put someone else Oh, did. hey, Therese. How are you? Horny. Excuse me. You heard me. Let's cut the crap, Curtis. I'm proud of that excuse me moment. You. Very attractive. Listen, Therese, I have a girl. I don't care about that. I want to be a prom date. I want you. I want your flesh. And your sweat. Oh, boy. And then she just walks away. <laughs> Look at that shit in grin. That's hilarious. You know, again, I think because Curtis is not from this world, I think he must have some kind of animal attraction that people aren't even aware of. I think it's like Stranger in a Strange Land where just people are, are just flinging themselves at him because that doesn't happen to people like him in real life. So I think it's about, I think it's stuff that they just can't control. He, has, he exudes something from whatever planet he's on. Uh, anyone who says, I want your flesh, is showing some serious red flags. You think? Yeah, you might might be right. But I don't know. It's kind of hard to... Can I go back in here? Yeah, I can. Ooh. I think I'm going to try to get this, and they're not going to let me... I had to pretend. Those are totally empty boxes. <laughs> I had to pretend like they're really heavy. Oh, gosh. Oh, my goodness. Oh. All right, see if I can log on to this computer here. Yeah. 
This must have been, I love, I, I don't either love or hate how slow this is. Just people, you know, they, they filmed every little transition. They'd never do that today. They would just get straight to the next thing. All right, I don't think I have whatever I need to get in here. I wonder if, I can, do I have Blob? Maybe Blob can get in there. No. <coughs> Arctic, this is exactly what I do at the office when I have my coffee break. Just go into the storeroom and move boxes around and try to break into uh, into little doorways, little John Malkovich doorways. Uh, all right. I know. Well, I can do it again. Okay, I know I can't get in. All right. So I don't have... Aha! I'm going to show this door the sexy postcard. No. Nothing. All right. My wallet? Throw my wallet at it? Bam! Okay, so I can't get to this yet. This is exactly what we did back in the 90s. Throwing things at it as much as you can? Yeah. yeah. Use like... the wallet on the wall. Use <laughs> the sexy postcard on the wall. All right. Well, so... while, while you're standing there, yeah. you should take your wallet. No, you should take your screwdriver. Okay. Can I throw it? Is it letting... Me... And click on Curtis five times. Okay, this is exciting. One. Two, three, four, five. Oh, I didn't do it fast enough. No, you should try the screwdriver oh, on Curtis five times. That's what I thought five I different did. Times. Oh, okay, that's two. I see. Three. How would anybody know this? Now use the wallet on Curtis. Now use the wallet. My goodness. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I remember shooting that. That was just bouncing around. I really had to use my, I had to use my, my hamstrings, my calves for that one. That was a tough day. That's partly why I got the part. I was just a good bouncer. All right, what else? Is there anything left in this? I don't think there's anything more. Any more little, should I go? Maybe I should leave. What do you think, Daniel? Yeah, you right. should. So I do want to make a, a comment. Uh, so if you if you haven't uh, played Phantasmagoria 2.1, uh, we're having so much fun with it. We've got so much to go. And Daniel is just creating this wonderful connection between our world and Phantasmagoria 2. And one of the things we've talked about, and who knows if we'll ever get there, is that we will create cubicles for anybody who joins Patreon at a certain level. And you guys can, we'll make a cubicle with your, you know, with your image, maybe a fidgeter of you sitting at a desk. And then we thought if we have too many, there's only a couple cubicles in here that we thought, oh, well, look, there's a whole stairwell. Let's go check that out. We could create a second floor with nothing but cubicles for, for our Patreon members. So that's just a fun thing we've thought about. Don't know if we'll do it, but what do you think, Daniel? Create a whole wind tech. I think I think we should do it. Yeah, it we sounds can. Sounds like fun. Yeah, it's like actually, a... we we could we could uh, try more things. For example, like add logical puzzles to a uh, Phantasmagoria two point one. Exactly. For, this, for this... example, the first puzzle. Instead of taking Blob to get your wallet, you actually move the sofa. <laughs> exactly. Have her move the sofa. That would be awesome. Uh, let's see, I'm here. And I'm going to take a quick little break and I'm going to answer some questions. So let me, uh, if I go to just Paul, am I still going to hear all the music? Yeah, so let me turn this down. All right. So we're at four o'clock. I'll probably do another 20 minutes or so, half an hour. I think that hour and a half is about the most I can do, but uh, this has been fun. So let's see. What am I missing here? Uh, so I'm going to scoot up a little. Uh, someone said, did you ever experience this lust? Oh, ever, 
everyone seems to have that Curtis has because he's a busy guy this whole game. I think I missed that. Super heavy boxes, yep. Uh, send Blob in for a recon, right? Uh, Alma asked, what is P2 is just, what if P2 is just an elaborate setup for a joke? It was the set of a porn movie this whole time. And that's why people are <laughs> all over Curtis. Yeah, and he didn't even know it. Or he did know it. Don't forget to look at your items. You can see details of them. Oh, that's good to know. All right, I'll check out my items and see the details. Oh, I know what that, what the eyeball thing, yeah. Yes, two people said, inspect items in the inventory. I will do that. I got to find an axe. Yeah, good good point. Or or a, another granola bar. It will melt away from the sexiness. Seeing you play this game makes me so happy, says Pascal. I would have loved it years ago, getting more insights. <laughs> well, I'm not sure I'm giving any insights, but... Uh, Hey, look at that. There's a stream element saying that you can you can join Patreon. Join Patreon. Uh, okay. Well, this is a good time. If you have any questions, feel free to dive in. Uh, Artur is wondering if I read the email replies. Oh no, I haven't. But the computer was the computer wasn't was done. So I think I have to go back to my my cubicle. And uh, shame they don't make games like this anymore. You're right. It would be kind of how cool would it be if they did a a version of a game like this with all the technology they have today, but to really, really, um, you know, maintain the pace and the style, not not get all fast and and crazy. Uh, let's see. House Phantasmagoria Two ending coming along. You're gonna to have to join, join tomorrow for the for my announcements with uh, with Andy. I don't really have an answer for that, but I I do have a little bit more to share. Who in the crew had the highest score in Adam's fin, pin pin Adam's family pinball? I know I was up there uh, because I was there most of the time, and I had the most free time because I was always waiting to go on set. Mitri was really good. And a couple of the crew guys were amazing. And sometimes we would just share a pinball. You know, you'd be on the right side, they'd be on the left side, and you'd just take a flipper each, and that would be fun. But there were times that, yeah, I think Mitri was was the guy. Uh, funny enough, if you go into Trevor's login Easter egg, you can play a few mini games. All right. Okay, well, there you go. I will make sure if I don't respond immediately to any of this, uh, Oh, yeah. Also, the other thing, Contra just made sure that we talk about Discord. The Discord channel we have is really, really cool. People are so cool there. It's really fun. There's a lot of fun conversations. I'd never been on Discord before, and I'm just thrilled that we have so many uh, neat people that, you know. So come join us on Discord if you can. We'd love to have you there. And let's get back to the game. I should probably watch other streamers and see what they do because they might be way better than what I'm doing. All right, so nothing over there. Shouldn't there be something there, Daniel? It seems to me that that is a wasted space. We, we should. Eventually you'll go there. Aha, uh -huh. oh, that's right. That's going to be, yeah, that's when everything, all the stuff goes down. All right. Now, I filmed about seven of those, me walking in the doors. Did they just use the same one every time? Or do you see different reactions of me opening the door? All right, do I get to go to make the rounds again and see what? Yeah, so no one. I guess I got to get back to work. Okay, and then, you know, I'm going to go back to work. Well, what do you think? No, that was a mistake, but I gave it a shot. All right, then let's go over here. All right, so now, I love that. I mean, they should just they could just have me there, but every time they have you walk right in. All right, let's check out my stuff. Let's take a look at my screwdriver. Well, that is very informative. And the one thing I know is that it is a flathead and that might come in handy later on. All right, let's check out the picture. 
Why aren't you letting me see the picture? Oh, I got to close out. All right. Now I want to see the picture. Todd Lasea, Jonas Craig, and his my his wife, my mom, with the terrible wig. I mean, come on, were they? Did they really think that that was going to work? I just I don't get that. That that is the mystery of this game to me. You're not sharing the game, Paul. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see the game? All right. Well, you know, I'm not, I don't know. I see the game, but you're not streaming the game. Well, you know, it's my game. I mean, I just, sometimes I just want to play by myself. Can I just do that for a little while? Jeez. All right. Let me go back. Well, basically, so far, I've looked at a screwdriver and I've learned nothing except that it's a flathead. I looked at my don't mom. Don't beat yourself up. It was a great monologue. Paul. <laughs> yeah, it's like the inner. Yeah. Hey, there we are. I mentioned last time that that was a picture we took the very first day of shooting. I didn't know either of them. None of us knew each other. And we're all pretending like we're best friends. That is acting. All right, let's check out the... Yeah, so, I mean, I've seen all this stuff. What am I... Is there something I'm missing? And there's this. Oh, can I finally read this? Why can't I read this? I haven't read this yet. Did we read this? Click the, click the button with the ah. magnifying All right. I will read this in my in my best in my best Therese voice. I dream about you. I feel your hands on my body. I taste your mouth on mine. I don't have the accent. When I wake, I can still feel your breath on my neck and I shiver with pleasure. You yeah. know? I'll take it. Is this still red flags, by the way? Whoever said red flags, is this still red flags or are we, uh, can we move forward here? This, please say we can move forward. All right. Um, then we get out of there. Oh, were there other things that I could have done that to? No, there's none of this. Okay. All right. I don't think I missed anything. Let's get, oh, I can call people. Hi, Blob. How's it going, dude? Nothing up here, nothing up here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna call people. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get to work yet. All right. I just had lunch with Trevor, so he and I are caught up. I haven't talked to myself in a while. Oh, I think I'm losing sound. Oh, that's because I turned sound off. There we go. All right, here we go, 6D100. We're sorry, you cannot, we're sorry, your call cannot be completed, it is dialed. Check the number and dial again. All right, all right, 6D100. What? I think there's a lot more times I call myself, but maybe that's at a different part of the game. Nope. All right, I'll do my voiceover. I'd better let her work. Um, Daniel, is there anything here? While we're at it, while don't, why don't we try a few Easter eggs? Go to your computer. All right, hold on. Let's see if Teresa at least will answer. And no one's answering. Okay. Stop bothering other employees. Yeah, well, I work. Well, that was lit white, so I thought I'd be able to get new people. All right, go to my computer. Now, log out. Ooh, log out. I have a thing, the moon icon. All right. Do you really want to exit the system and log out? Why, well, yes, I do. Because I want to see an Easter egg. Now, click the computer. And choose Jocelyn's user. All right. And the password is XXX. This is very exciting. Oh, maybe this is a porn site, a porn set that I never knew about. XXX. Enter nudity code. No, oh. you should type. You should type Adrian. I'm gonna get fired. I am totally gonna get fired. This is not good. Adrian. 
E D R I A. Is it that spelled or E N N? No, 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 no. E N N. Okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> that's it. That that's it. That's the new. I want. I wait a minute. I want. I want to do that again. I gotta hear that. Let's let's. Hi, sweetie. Oh, there's a bunch of them, and then there's a burp. So how many are there? Let's try a couple of more. Uh, and Adrian is the name of the character in Phantas One, right? Yep. Okay. So Curtis somehow knows Adrian. That's interesting. Okay, so back to that little gasp. That's probably it. That would have been a third one. Yeah, okay. now choose um, Trevor's user. Okay. And the password is belly button in lowercase. Okay, so before we go further, so there is no way anybody could have ever known this. So somewhere along the line, Sierra just released a, a, a you know, a, a pamphlet or something and said, you know, there's where the, how do people find this stuff back in the day? Yeah, through the internet forums of the early, the mid nineties. Yeah, but no one can just discover this. I mean, there, no one can, can happen upon this. Somebody had to leak this stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, Curtis reads about Adrian, I think, in the newspaper in the house that she just published a book based on the events of P1. Yeah, I think we're going to see that. Isn't she? Isn't he invited to her book signing? Why didn't we film a... They really should have brought Adrian in for a, a little cameo. That would have been cool. Okay. You get it on Chapter 3. You get the, the invitation to in the In Chapter 3? Okay. So I got a game. Yeah. Ooh. I'm so going to play Pong. Awesome. I was really good at this back in the day. That is like the worst. What is the, what's the ball? It looks like an amoeba. It looks like some kind of germ. Oh, I kicked their butt. Boom. Winner. Does it get better? Does it get harder? How many of you just sat and played this for like however long? Daniel, how long did you well, play this I, game? I presume, I presume that most people found out about these Easter egg a few years after the game came yeah, out. Yeah, probably. Oh, but look at that. The... Oh, okay. All right. Now we're talking. Ooh. Oh, son. I'm celebrating. All right. This is riveting uh, stream. I bet you I'm going to get 200,000 views of this. All right. Nice. And then what are these? More ones? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, if I wasn't streaming with you guys, I would to totally play this game. I would, I would, all right, all right, all right. And what's this one? I honestly think that the game's developers had too much time. You might be right. How do I get out? I don't want to play this game anymore. I guess I got to play. What do I do? All right. Exit. Let me out of here. Okay. Yeah, you might be right, Daniel. All right. Is that our, is that our Easter click, egg hunt uh, for now? Hold, hold the Alt button and click the Winvade game. Okay. <laughs> uh, and if you'll win oh, this here. round, then the spacecraft will change to Andy Hoyo's head. It's not letting me, my, my bullets aren't getting anywhere. They're just, stop, oh, I got a couple. I'm not getting, there's like a force field. Yeah, I don't, do you hear that? Oh, that's the, that's, that's Trevor going, doing a little growl. Actually, yeah. I don't think it's a, a force field. I think that they actually allow you to shoot only one set of bullets and then when you shoot another since they use the same object they just erase the object and reset your you... bullets when you yeah, click on exactly. it don't click fast oh i see let the bullet travel yeah I, I think we're gonna move on i hope no one 
no one holds that against me. But I don't think we should be playing games at work. You know, I just think that is not good use of the of the company money. All right. So let's make some more phone calls now. All right. Uh, what next? Back to work. I'll have to log back yeah. in. Yeah. I already logged out, so how do I log in? See, I'd be stuck here forever. I don't even know how to get back into the game or how to get back into the system. I've already logged out. Oh, I was logged into... Uh... So I guess it's time to go, huh? Is this, do you think this is the end of the workday, or do I have more stuff to do? Let's see. Try to look at the Veniman document again. Because, oh, I, did I send it to someone? Oh, let's check out, we should check out some email responses too, right? So check out my venom. Oh, what's that? Oh, I know what this is. This one I, this one I saw in a, I think this is the rat boy thing. But what are you supposed to do? So it's just happening and I'm supposed to go, huh? You should you should click the letters to stop. Oh, each I see. At a certain point. Oh, I see, I see, I see. But this would have been probably incredibly frustrating for you guys if you were trying to figure this out on your own. Yep. <laughs> How many times it's, did you just walk I away think from that they, I think that they uh, figured that when you get this puzzle, then you'll try to walk around the office like you usually do, yeah. to talk to everybody, and eventually Bob will uh, call you a rat boy, and uh, you're supposed to connect the dots. Yourself. Oh, right. All right. Okay. Well, then I missed the opera. I, I want to hear Bob call me rat boy. Did we screw that up? I think he already called you. If not, then... Uh, yeah, okay. So... Is there more stuff here to change? Antihistamine, pain reliever, college football. I think football. you should uh, go talk to the person who did that to you. Who did this to me? Okay, I'm still working. Oh, I'm still working. Oh, there's a... All right, I'm going to go talk to someone. Who did this to me? That was a, that was a hint. Daniel, and I think the person that did it to me is this dude right over. No, wait, I always. This gets so frustrating. Where am I? Over here. There. Hey, what's up? Bob, I found my document. That was pretty juvenile of you. What are you talking about, Craig? It's not my fault you can't find your files. Yeah, well, whatever. Just don't let it happen again or you'll regret it. Ooh, is that a threat? You're scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> he's awesome. I love that. I love the way he holds his book, too. That sort of, And he's in his cubicle reading a book. Okay, you know, I'm a little confused now. Um, maybe you guys can help me. Daniel, you're going to know this, so maybe maybe you can come through the chat. But I, what did? how did I lose my document and... I don't remember losing my document and what Bob just did. I'm not sure what I'm talking about. So he the document is the document he just locked. He locked it, so that means I can't yeah, get into the it. Password, and then you. Oh, I get it. Open. So the the password kept me from. Oh, I got you. So he's screwing around, not letting me in there. So I'm trying to work, and now I can't do it. And it was Bob that made that happen. Gotcha. It's a work of art. It's a workbook of work. And Bob is boob. All right. So nothing more. Can I try something on him? Can I say I'm going to hit you with a screwdriver? No? None of this stuff works? Okay. There's really nothing more to talk to Bob about. What about Therese? Hey, I can go say hi to her. I mean, we did just have a moment. We had a very interesting moment in the storeroom. So what would I say to her? What would I say right now? I'd walk in and i say, you know, I'm wondering if you would like to play some backgammon at some point? I don't know. Let's see what I think, Curtis I says. think I've reported you to HR. It's the most <laughs> common response in this case. That's what happened in the network room today. Okay, he's, he's talking about it. He's communicating. I really like you a lot, but I'm seeing somebody right now. Be but... quiet. Listen. 
Listen to the language of your flesh. It's telling you what to do. He has no problem making out with Jocelyn first thing in the morning, but this is just too much. Well, he doesn't know her yet. Listen to the language of your flesh. All right, all right. He's definitely listening. He's probably... Notice I don't see him right now. I imagine he's, you know, put some cold water on his face or something like that. Um, all right, now you just kind of go, where, what the hell? I don't want to go back. Let's go see if Trevor needs to, yeah, let's, hey, we just had lunch. Uh, he's such a total jerk. Do you know what he just said to me? Uh, no, but I'm sure it was ill-mannered and lame. <laughs> don't let him get to you, bud. Everybody knows you're going to get that promotion over him. Yeah, well, I still think anybody'd mind if I killed him. Um, nope, be my guest. All right. Um, that was a good bit of editing uh, because he threw it and it was one shot and then it cut and the shot was the, in the air and me catching it and it looked seamless. So that's well done, Wes Plate. That was really well done. Um, I have a thing that I'm going to share with you and I think it's probably time to start wrapping up. So I'm going to share. I'm going to save. And then we will. So let's, where are we now? We're end of day we're gonna call this end oh that was <laughs> that was the end of work day that was middle of work day so real I don't know if it's the end of work day it's just uh, what do you want to call this Daniel every hour in Wintech is the end of the work exactly day. yeah <laughs> uh, let's just call this another another actual end, end of work day, of work day. Okay, save that. Excellent. And now I'm going to just turn this off for now. And then I'm going to jump over here. So uh, when uh, I just, this is this thing that I've noticed that is never, I don't, I don't know anybody else who's ever done this. So, so when Curtis threw the, the, you know, the trash in the, in the trash basket, I was an athlete. I played basketball through high school. I, I, you know, I'm a pretty, pretty good hand-eye coordination. But for some reason, I every time I throw something, whether it's my socks into a hamper or you know, wadded up something into a trash ba basket, I miss all the time. I mean, it's it's stunning, and no one's watching me but me. And and so, it's not out of nervousness. It's not on purpose. But my my miss rate is is unbelievable. There, if, if a movie was made of how many times I missed whatever I was throwing something into, no one would believe it. If it was a character thing in some movie and they missed as much as I do, it would be like it's too un, it's unbelievable. It's not realistic. And it's true. I miss all the time. I don't know what that is, but I want to share that with you because I think we're. Yeah, we're close enough now to be able to share that. All right, you guys, I think that's it. It's 424. We're still at WinTech. I don't know what's next, but Daniel does, and he'll help me get there. I hope you guys had fun. Thank you so much for, for joining me. We're going to keep doing this every Friday until it's over. And with my slow pace, this could be, <laughs> I don't know, Daniel, we're thinking like, 12 weeks, 15, yeah. <laughs> 2023, exactly. So, uh, um, so if you want to stick with me, that would be great. But, uh, this has been a lot of fun and, uh, this will be on our YouTube channel. All of these sessions will be on the YouTube channel when they're done. And please, again, I'm going to throw up our, our, um, Patreon donors. I want to thank you guys again for making this possible. Can't simply can't do this without you and if you can possibly join this wonderful team we sure would appreciate it and please please join us tomorrow i know it's a lot of phantasmagoria too in a very short period of time but andy hoyos is it's not to be missed so tomorrow at 11 p.m 11 a.m pacific time uh we'll see you then all right take care guys thank you daniel Thanks for having me paul yeah buddy appreciate it very much talk to you soon
Bye.